Tonight, we zoom in on motorcycle madness and the battle against bikers who try to break the law. Pull it over! Pull it over! You go down, that thing! Pull it over! Plus the latest weapon in the crackdown on dangerous driving. Police camera action takes to the road on two wheels. motorcycle courier with a deadline to meet, the pizza delivery boy with moped and mozzarella, and the veteran with the classic bike, but not necessarily classic road sense. Drivers have seen them all, but usually too late. There is a growing tendency amongst motorists just not to give bikes the room or attention that they deserve. But in future, there's an added incentive to keep your eye out for the bike that's behind you. This is the police video bike. It's brand new and bikes like this are in daily service up and down the country from Whitby to Weymouth. It's equipped with 12,000 pounds worth of the latest video equipment to capture indisputable evidence of reckless driving. Now, like the video patrol car, it's usually unmarked, but unlike the patrol car, this can accelerate from naught to 60 in just four seconds. It can also weave in and out of the tightest spots in traffic. In other words, it's been designed to reach the parts that other patrol vehicles cannot. This clip from Dorset Police shows the camera bike at its most versatile. A motorcyclist flies past at a crazy speed of well over 100 miles an hour. Not only is the police bike able to match his speed within an instant, it's also able to follow the offender when he decides to thread himself between two lanes of traffic. Unbelievably, this rider was making a return to the road after a long layoff from a serious motorbike accident. This cavalier comeback assured he could rest once more. Excess speed and undertaking earned him a £125 fine and disqualification for six more miserable months. The ability to squeeze through traffic means the police camera bike is often the first on the scene of accidents, as in this case, a confrontation between a mini and a squirrel. Apparently the driver had swerved to avoid the little creature and this was the result. Driver and furry friend escaped unscathed. The furry dice were less lucky. Motorcyclists claim they like the thrill of the open road. All too often it's the cue for an open throttle and a frightening experience for any oncoming motorists. Here the police camera bike is pursuing a motorcyclist taking corners at breakneck speeds. One recent study found that 90% of motorcycle deaths were due to misjudging speed on bends. The biker was brought to a halt before he was able to turn himself into another digit of road accident data. Just how easily bikes can give cars the slip, especially in a built-up area with busy traffic, is illustrated here in 1991 BC, before camera bike. A police car had tailed this speeding rider off London's A40 and toward the West End when they persuaded him to pull in. But before officers were able to take down any details, the biker made a dash for it, catching the driver off guard. Fortunately, he couldn't escape the video evidence of his number plate. Echo, I've got it on the video. Yes. But there is one all-seeing support tool from which bikes cannot escape, the flying eye. In this instance, Lancashire Police Air Support are tracking a bike stolen from Lancaster University. A report of a tyre in the carriageway, the M6 southbound. Just after a patrol car offers the thief the opportunity to give himself up. Instead, he chooses to risk his life by riding at speed the wrong way up a motorway slip road. And again, onto a dual carriageway. Sorry, 
LAPD asking him a 2 1. Oblivious to the hopelessness of his predicament and the safety of a pedestrian crossing the road, he continues on his futile way until he eventually succumbs to the inevitable arrest and punishment. In this case, nine months imprisonment for stealing the motorbike and associated driving offences. These people all look pretty relaxed. They might even seem to be enjoying themselves, but in fact, they're the extras in a rather dramatic motorbike stunt. He's about to attempt to jump over them, but without the aid of a ramp. So in reality, they're pretty precarious. They're vulnerable. And that's the way all motorcyclists are when they take to the roads. Bikers are 33 times more likely to be killed on the roads than drivers safely cocooned within their motor cars. So all bikers should avoid taking any risks and should protect themselves. Unlike this guy and the drivers in our next sequence. For an example of how little respect cars give bikes, how's this? A police camera bike is travelling at nearly 120 miles an hour when a car thinks nothing of casually overtaking in front of it, forcing the rider to fall back on all his acquired driving skills. Bikes, it seems, often don't exist as far as some car drivers are concerned. Did you see that? I just saw the last bit of it. Just look at how a Jaguar, at the last second, moves from the outside lane right across the bike to get off at a slip road. Here's another chance to see this classic example of a driver not looking out for bikes. Miraculously, the rider was severely shaken, but otherwise not hurt. It is astonishing, nonetheless, that some bikers still insist on riding without protection. This moped rider has no helmet, no arm protection, and instead of boots, it's bare ankles and deck shoes. But it would have been far from plain sailing if he'd been thrown off travelling at this speed. Police in Holland were shocked to see this motorcyclist being dangerously tailgated by a car. It turned out he was having a driving lesson and his instructor was shielding him from the attention of other motorists. The police, however, thought that the instructor was keeping too close an eye on his pupil and instead conducted a little lesson of their own in stopping distances. But coming to a standstill, just doesn't seem to be in some bikers' makeup. Unremarkable as it may seem, the pavement is for pedestrians, and riding like this puts lives at risk. Fortunately, evidence of this guy's misdemeanor is on film, and he can be prosecuted at leisure. Mounting the middle section of the M25 is equally balmy. This is palpably no place to call home and say you're going to be late for supper. But this man's actually got it right. He's broken down and instead of phoning home, he's dialed 999 and is waiting by his bike for police assistance. When the police car arrives, it creates a rolling roadblock to slow the busy evening traffic to allow our model motorcyclist to cross all three lanes without risk to himself or other road users. Slowly, surely, safely. In the United States, of course, things are done rather differently and cooperation between police and public is not so easily won. Police in South Carolina had asked this male rider and female passenger to pull over after noticing they had no license plate. They refused and took off at high speed. Plan A was to try to slow the suspects by placing a car in front of them. And be careful, Robert, he will run into you. Boxing right there.
Gray. Well, he's still rolling. Coming up on highway, uh, Plan B, throw in some well-chosen words of advice. Pull it over. Pull it over. You go down that thing. Pull it over. Don't put too tight there. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Pull it over. That's a negative. That's a negative. My mistake. Pleasant Ridge. We're passing Pleasant Ridge now. Passing Pleasant Ridge. A bit more gentle persuasion. Hey, boy, it ain't nothing in the world worth dying. Pull that son of a bitch over. And then it was time to revert back to plan A. Hold up, Robert. Get by me. Back off, this Robert, is obviously off. not the type of tactics that we would see British police pursue on British roads. But in the States, it is more commonplace for police to up the ante in an effort to detain suspects before they can reach the relative sanctity of the state border. Now the camera car driver also joins the fray, pulling over to the right in front of the bike, forcing him off the road. And that was that. We got him stopped, just short of set 276. He lost it. A search at the scene revealed that the rider was carrying drugs. He received over five years in prison for possession with intent to distribute and traffic offences, as well as a broken leg. Charges against his female passenger, who was uninjured, were dropped. But at least these guys know what they're doing. They're professional stunt riders. And if anything were to go wrong, well, at least only they'd get hurt and not some unsuspecting member of the public. Now, not surprisingly, this stunt is called the Globe of Death, which is probably a pretty accurate description for the real world when it comes to acts of motorcycle madness. This may look like virtual reality, but it is, in fact, real-life insanity. This chap has strapped a camera to his bike to record his speeding exploits around the Peripherique, the Paris equivalent of the M25. This is madness writ large. This guy is risking life and limb and showing total disregard for other road users, most of whom don't even see him coming as he attempts an unofficial speed record for a circuit of the French Ring Road. He reaches 250 kilometers an hour. That's an astonishing 156 miles an hour. Well, thankfully, this was 1990, and the police are now wise to such terror. They've installed cameras and speed traps to deter offenders, making scenes like this very much a thing of the past. This guy is somewhat slower, but exhibiting the same scant regard for human life. In this case, a coach party of unsuspecting old-age pensioners. The Dutch policemen following him were not amused, but they had to see the funny side when, as they set off in pursuit, they were thwarted by a funeral procession. <laughs> Bikes and beer clearly don't mix. But if you are going to ride with alcohol, this is the only way to do it, under wraps and untouched. Regrettably, the same couldn't be said in this American incident. Drink was the explanation for the pretty pattern, a pretty irresponsible pattern, woven by this intoxicated motorcyclist. As he darts behind a group of pedestrians and across a line of traffic anticipating a green light, to evade a police roadblock.
five miles on and it was a bunch of vigilante citizens who were on the receiving end of his recklessness. But there was only ever going to be one loser. A smash with a passing car and he was forced to ditch his bike and submit himself to the local Los Angeles populace who were only too happy to assist officers in bringing him to justice. In this case, four years in the state penitentiary. Pedal power is booming. One in three of us now owns a bicycle. It's good for the environment and it's good for you. On average, regular cyclists live 10 years longer than non-cyclists. It's just such a pity about those irritating habits of a small minority of them. This enterprising chap appears to have a cycle path all to himself. Unfortunately, it's not so much a path as the hard shoulder of the M25. And crossing this high-speed slip road with no ability to accelerate meant he was at the mercy of any approaching motorist. The highway code is crystal clear. Cycling on the motorway is not allowed under any circumstances. This cyclist claimed he didn't know, but was fined for his ignorance. Bike technology may have come on light years, but the behaviour of some cyclists continues to remain in the dark ages. How else does one explain cycling on the wrong side of the road, against oncoming traffic? Cycling with the traffic is the only safe way, unless you take it literally and hang on like this imbecile. Talk about pedal power, this Northern Irish cyclist could probably generate enough energy to heat up the whole of Ulster as he weaves his way around parked cars and unnerves the motorist. It is perfectly possible for cyclists to be convicted for speeding, but if you look at the speed indicator at the bottom right of your screen, you'll see that luckily for him, he hits 30 miles an hour and no more. But while he was happily oblivious of the police, they were keeping a close eye on him. And one more sharp swerve was enough to persuade them that this speed merchant needed calming down. Rugged countryside like this in Dorset isn't the sort of place you'd expect to find traffic police on patrol. But it's in relatively inaccessible locations such as this that criminals attempted to come for a burn-up. In some cases, quite literally. And as if that wasn't bad enough, they also bring stolen bikes here for potentially lethal off-road racing, as in this police exercise. Now, to combat this sort of madness, officers have discovered that two wheels are better than four. So, meet the latest section of the Dorset Police the Scrambler Division. Officers patrol this area all year round. Their main aim is to deter irresponsible bike users from causing environmental damage to this heathland, an offence for which riders can be fined up to a thousand pounds. The technique may be different from the one they use on the roads, but the result's just the same. They're heading towards Pembrey. They're now gone underneath the road. No scrambler bikes for the police here in Wales, but plenty of scrambler problems. Some youngsters are desperately trying to give the police the runaround, but with the air support unit in attendance, there's no escape. There's a junction on the right, they've gone up the that road. Yeah, I'll make my way up the mountain road and see if I can cut them off at the top. Police in the air are detached and able to redirect the ground forces with calm authority. And it looks like Once again, the culprits are soon in custody, even if their machines are not. The man that you've got has obviously hidden his motorbike. Yeah, we've got both bikes now as well, over. Excellent. Can I leave it with you, then? Yeah, thanks for your assistance, over. Little time for such civility on the more frenetic patch of South London. 
Police are on the trail of a rider and pillion passenger suspected of drug possession. It's rush hour, and high-speed driving in these conditions requires a trained nerve and no little patience. Approaching a mini roundabout. Ah, come yeah. on, come on, get out, get out of the way. Approaching a mini roundabout for round eight. He's off down Hilling Park. Campus of Hope, so sorry. It's approaching the next roundabout. He's done a left, going towards uh, five ways. Left into five ways, or towards five ways, I think. We're in Warren Road. He's doing a left again. And a left is a good one, Road. By now, a police bike has been summoned, and as the car squeezes through heavy traffic, we can see the bike heading towards us in the opposite direction. The police bike has now joined the police car and its intervention is decisive. As the suspects catch sight of the yellow jacketed rider in their mirror, they know the game is up. He's given himself up. The pillion passenger was cautioned for possession of drugs and the rider for dangerous driving, theft and no insurance. He was disqualified for two years. Uh, well and truly detained, uh, just a van unit needed, please. Finally, for some, two wheels are just never enough. Call me irresponsible. Call me unreliable. New drama from Linda LaPlante next Tuesday at 9 when Miriam Margulies stars in Supply and Demand.